bloody conflict between Serbs and Albanians in Kosovo erupted in 1989. This brought international attention to the Balkans. The Serb policy of ethnic cleansing led to NATO airstrikes 10 years later. Bajram Zabai is a 50-year-old teacher in the southern Kosovo village of Bukosh. He shows us the bullet holes in the school wall. 27 of the villagers were executed here by the Serbs as they were caught fleeing to Albania last May. Haunting memories. NATO airstrikes failed to stop the murder. Here in the Zanzibar bar in Pristina, all of that is but a distant, if grim, memory. Survivors would rather forget the ordeal. Survival in Kosovo today is no easy task. If you have hard currency and you are not a Serb, a Gypsy or a Slavic Muslim, then you stand a much better chance. There are 25% more cars on Kosovo's roads than there were before the war. Most of them have no registration plates and many are stolen. There is still no state control of the situation. Issuing registration plates is not the only thing causing the international authorities a headache. These postcards depict a fictional Kosovo Republic, although there are still no post offices in working order. To get their passport extended, Albanians have to queue up here. The precious document is only issued by their enemy, the Serbs. These Serbian women are victims of victims. Serb minorities fear the Albanians' revenge in their enclaves. Last summer, there was still an average death toll of 50 murders per week. Now it's around five. That's what K4 calls progress. K4 is a security force mandated by the United Nations Security Council with NATO participation. Its troops moved into Kosovo last June. The peacekeepers are no longer striving for a multi-ethnic Kosovo, but a peaceful coexistence of the two peoples. The 300-strong K4 troop has been active in the south of Kosovo, mostly around Suve Reke, since last September. The Serbs have all fled. Their priority was to cooperate with international aid organizations in finding winter shelter for 12,000 homeless Albanians. We've brought machinery and tools along so that local carpenters can make doors and windows. None of the donor countries has yet fulfilled its generous promises and UN administration is simply not working. Life is only getting better for those who help themselves, as we see with this rebuilding initiative. We built this wall together. German soldiers laid the roof beams and we've given advice about materials. Teacher Bajram Ziba is the community speaker for the village of Bokosh. He is holding a meeting to decide how to spend the 500 Deutschmark that the Austrian soldiers have brought to help out. He consults other villagers to see who needs immediate help in the community. Bajram Ziba decides that the Katoli family need help. 500 Deutschmark is a lot of money in Kosovo at the moment. It's around the same as a month's salary for a university professor. It may be a modest sum for us, but for the Katoli family, it's certainly enough to get them back on their feet. The Neighbors in Need project has raised 41 million US dollars so far. 
This has made three and a half thousand destroyed homes inhabitable again and has given hope to many a destroyed soul. Our suggestion was to deploy German forces to rebuild the villages. This has proved successful in about 90% of the region we're responsible for. A contact leader has been allocated to each village and they are in charge of the cooperations and rebuilding program. Sadri Matash managed to survive with help from the Red Cross. Last year, he returned with his brother and their families from the Austrian camp. This is what they found when they reached their village, Kernen, in the Ishtok region. It had been razed to the ground. They have a roof over their head again now. The Red Cross gave us vouchers worth 1,350 US dollars each. We could buy the material for our roof, and we also got four windows and two doors. Laura Zabexia is still homeless. Her family's house was right on Metrovich's front line. The UN Refugee Aid Center has set up camp in the yard of its former premises. They have a flat in the north of the city, but daren't return there, as they were thrown out by the Serbs. This block of flats next door is being prepared for Serbs who were driven out by the Albanians. There has been violent rioting in Mitrovica for weeks. Albanians and Serbs fight one another constantly, and both riot against these French K-4 troops. The fighting takes place on two bridges which span the river Ibar. The river separates the Serb-controlled north from the Albanian quarter in the south. The Serb leader is Oliver Ivanovic, Milosevic's right-hand man in Mitrovica. area around of the both bridges will be safety zone, so-called safety zone. It means empty, uh, empty zone. And we think that it's very big dangerous for the Serbs. We cannot accept it. Because in this empty zone, for very sure, a very short time, will be fulfilled with the Albanian. Albanian spokesman Bajram Rexhepi lives only with his guard dogs in the Albanian quarter south of the river. He doesn't see Mitrovica as a divided city. It is not Serbian port. Yeah. It is north port, where before of the war was more of 9,000 Albanian, about 2,000 Serbs. More of 70 plus percent they was Albanians, who was deported by force during the war and ethnicizing was continued until now. Their international accomplices can't prevent that. But wherever they appear, a different type of aid worker turns up. This is a traveling circus of multilingual call girls in Pristina's Miami Beach Club. A bottle of champagne costs 500 marks. The price includes an evening's personal entertainment. Sex slaves from Eastern Europe flown in from Zurich. The manager tells us that this is his contribution to the rebuilding of Kosovo and for the UCK, the Underground Kosovo Liberation Army. Officially, the UCK no longer exists, 
yet its strategic aim clearly still does. It controls this sealed Albanian settlement in the Balkans, along with that of the main trading routes from Turkey to Central Europe. This is the toll of the conflict, and this is what it has taken for NATO to grasp the full extent of the situation in Kosovo.